So what have you learned from uh, uh, Kihnu people mm. about the keeping up the traditions? Yeah, so um, so I've done some field work in Kihnu and then I've also, um, so I've done field work on my own, but then I've also attended the Kihnu Knitting Festival um, and then done like archival research and looked at museum um, artifacts as well. Um, there's a lot that I've learned from Kihnu people. Um, like, especially with uh, the like shepherding practices and how um, crafts are incorporated into daily life. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is everyday craft. Uh, we tend to mostly focus on, you know, like special occasion clothing, uh, wedding clothing, people's Sunday best. I'm really interested in textiles that are used in the home. So uh, when you're on Kihnu and you go into somebody's house, you find all of these beautiful textiles that are being used in the home. And they're not, um, they're not there for show. They're there because they're part of people's lives. Some of them are not as complex as the ones that are being sold as these tourist crafts. But nevertheless, they usually have these wonderful um, like construction details, like the socks that we worked on at the knitting festival here. They're men's socks. They're fairly simple compared to the other socks, but they have these wonderful little details, like the um, little star that's on the heel and um, some of the ways of like uh, constructing them where like the stripes on the heel match really nicely with the stripes on the body of the sock. And they're supposed to look good when they're worn, but also when you fold the heel down to store it, you should be able to see those stripes exactly matching up. It's the same thing with the mittens and all sorts of other things that have this kind of like, beautiful construction. But when you see these things in people's homes, you know, often they're just like simple striped socks or these um, rag rugs on the floor, or um, uh, there are these like woven um, textiles that they use as kind of like bed covers, and they put them on furniture too. And those have like really interesting patterns on them, but they're like usually on a somewhat larger scale than what you would see in the handicrafts that are sold in most of the stores. Mm -hmm. And um, But nevertheless, they reflect the same sort of design sense and it's just really like exciting to me to see those textiles in use because I don't think they're talked about enough and they're not um, usually documented very well. They don't have the same kind of like, mm, I don't know, they don't get the same kind of excitement from people, I guess, maybe researchers or museum collectors um, as these like festive things. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I really get into that. Yeah. And um, when I've visited with people in their homes, I've found that um, there are all these people who don't think of themselves as craftspeople who are nevertheless making these like really incredible things. And they'll tell me, oh, go talk to Eli Karyam, right? Yeah. But like they're, they're artisans themselves. They're just not like really seeing themselves as that. Yeah. And there is hundreds of years of designing behind the works because they're yeah. traditional. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and they are tested in everyday life during the many, many decades. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, like the um, there's a grammar of design here. Yeah. Um, people aren't, as far as I understand it, people are not sitting there making copies of things. They're making things with kind of their own um, variations, but it's all within this grammar. So yeah. it all makes sense. There's this kind of shared aesthetic um, quality to them and and um, construction details are usually fairly consistent but nevertheless people get to change and play and um, there are people who can look at a pair of mittens and say oh yeah so and so knitted that in the 1940s because mm -hmm. they're very like individual as well yeah. yeah I also admired the way people talked about uh, making socks yeah that uh, they, everybody told how they do it and then others were commenting with very friendly environment but uh, uh, very safe environment recognizing that there are differences some were passionate to defend that my way is right way but uh, anyway uh, everybody was open I'm used to um, to a culture where you keep all the knowledge you can to yourself mm -hmm. and here, here they enjoy talking comparing mm. and talking yeah. and, and and sharing even to us who are outsiders yeah i was no way um uh, kept uh, lower because i'm not local and yeah. that that was also very nice i enjoyed it yeah I, i've uh, had that experience just as somebody being from the u.s you would think that yeah. i wouldn't have as 
much access and I probably don't, but I have a surprising amount of access. Yeah. I think um, from, from what I've gotten when I've interviewed people, um, they've said that what's really important to them is that people do things correctly. So um, they want to teach you because they want you to do it right. They don't want mm. you to go home and then do it with like weird colors or do it in a sloppy way and then say, this is a Kihnu design. They yeah. want it to be the correct yarn and the correct colors and work with this kind of grammar of yeah. the, the motifs. But yeah, uh, what you're saying about comparing, I've had that experience again and again where you sit down with Kihnu women and the, the first thing that they do is they start looking at each other's skirts you know, you see somebody just being like, oh, what's what's this, you know? Yeah. And um, and then they'll start kind of like chatting about details in the clothing or whatever. And if it's something that's handmade, then they'll talk about how they did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah they are, it's kind of gossiping. They are very curious yes. about, but it's not gossiping about people. It's gossiping about uh, uh, textiles and uh, crafts. Yeah, and it's uh, it's something I could do for many many hours too. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, me too. But it's, yeah, 